Yep. Just go. Ooh. First day of school. Go. Bye. Bye. Hurry up. Nora's first day. She's. I will not let that minivan go around me. You. Wow, cloudless sky today, man. Look at that. About 75 degrees already. A few things in here. One pallet. And somebody at the scrapyard is like, that's a Kirby and that thing's worth a amount of dollars. And the reason why I went amount of dollars is because so many people make that claim. Okay. Okay. Since they have the Kirby, okay, I'll just keep it. And I think, I think a bottom piece fell off and I forgot to pick it up. Which was kind of dumb, I guess. So it's not complete now. <laughs> Junkyard mentality. This thing eventually is gonna fall apart. This just gets harder to work every time. <clears throat> Got a little bit of water here. Put in the fridge inside the compound. I got a check. Of course, I need this handy dandy thing for uh, to fix my brakes, which I wasn't able to do yesterday. So maybe it's Trinket Goblin. Um, yeah, it's a YouTuber channel. I don't know if you guys are subscribed. He's got a pretty good little channel going there. He's got like 5,000 subscribers. Not bad. He's always showing like a, it's not really a vlog, well, I guess it is a vlog of sorts, but usually shows like some of the stuff that he found. He doesn't go out and like, uh, you know, adventures and stuff like that, so it's usually a, what he found around his area or whatever, or I guess uh, online. He's good at finding stuff like that. Craigslist and stuff. Selling, selling little odds and ends and stuff like some, uh, I don't know, some BMX bike parts that he was thinking of were worthless. You know, he sold a. Uh, he found a bike at the scrapyard. He paid six dollars for it. I guess at the scrapyard, and uh, he parted it out. He got like a hundred and sixty or hundred seventy bucks for it. Not bad. It's a lot more than scrap. Probably get like three or four dollars at the most. That's that's if you dismantled it and. Uh, and the prices were a little bit better for uh, aluminum and uh, whatnot. If I had like a hook tool, I could just grab that without climbing up and down on the truck. You know, climbing up and down on this on this model truck because this is a 2500 series. That's pretty tall, man. That's a good three feet at least. The 1500 series. It's a little bit lower. It's not such a... Believe me, it makes a big difference. I got short legs. I'm a 30-inch inseam, so... That's not much. <laughs> it's not much to work with. Leg-wise. I have short legs. Okay, oh, yeah, I, I saved this... This thing right here, I had a couple of people comment to me. I didn't even know what it was, but uh, somebody told me exactly what it is. It's, I don't know, something for fishing. I forgot the word. I don't fish. I think I, 
think I stuck a lure in the in the water once in my life. I didn't catch anything. So I'm like, and it seemed boring. <laughs> wow, right now I'm pissing off a lot of people. I know. For me, it seemed boring. Oh yeah, there's the the part that's missing, and I was looking at it, and I'm like, man. Then when I realized what was missing, I'm like, oh well, I should have picked it up. That's probably why they threw it away. The entire thing is like jammed with corn. No, no, maybe that's the part. I'm such an airhead. The part never did fall off. It just became dislodged or it's on a hook. Duh. <laughs> Shows you what I know. Look, I, I know cars, kind of. Not entirely, but that's all I really pay attention to. I don't pay attention to anything else. There's, there's two more for me. It's like my head is already filled with like too much data anyway. Because people are like, how did you know that? You know, like little tidbits and factoids, which makes me a kook. Keeper of Odd Knowledge, K-O-O-K. -O -K. <laughs> I know all this weird, obscure crap that is totally worthless. There you go. Yeah, so yesterday when I dumped them file cabinets, I... Woo, doggy. <laughs> uh, the owner of the place goes like this. Well now, I'm like yeah, I'm trying to act all innocent. How much uh, should I take off for all that paper? Ooh, no! <laughs> uh, I go, I, I don't know. Uh, I wasn't gonna go. Hey, what paper? You know what I mean? And instead, I'm like, um, I don't know. You're the owner of the yard. Take two thousand pounds off if you have to. I mean. Which in which case I would end up owing the money. I think I'm done with this. I'd like to get the rest of the crap, but yes, this is handy dandy. This looks pretty. That looks pretty uh harmful. If misused. Yeah, he wasn't very pleased. With that, with the weaponized uh, file cabinet, they only they only discovered one. By the time they discovered one, the rest of them were all dumped in the dumpster. Cause that's how they, that's how they haul their metal. I think if he realized every one of them was filled with that stuff, he would have shit a brick. Hey, look, the price of scrap is $200 at where it was yesterday. Who knows what it is today? Could be a dollar. Okay, there's a bunch of crap over by the, over by my buddy's shop. I go get it. Phew. Phew. What a glorious day, right? I know, it sounds like I'm copying off some other YouTuber, but no, really. You can't monopolize a gift from nature, right? Oh, look at that computer. It looks like it was abused. Yeah, them bed frames. Fancy. Don't want them, don't eat them. Now the thing about 
selling stuff. I mean, we're back on that subject again, which is fine. Is I totally agree with my commenters and subscribers about that subject. The only problem with that is you've seen what happened to the kingdom. You know, the compound filled with stuff. You could save that, you could save that, you could save that. Okay. There's no outlet for it. And uh, everybody's telling me, you know, you could list it and all that. And sure, you know, you get $10 for a bike. That's great. I welcome that. I need that. Uh, the problem is, oh, I'm not allowed to sell the stuff here, okay? You know, cause I, I asked the owner if I could have, like, a, every now and then I could set up, like, a yard sale. Nope not happening. No can do it. It would make life really easy. I could, I could set tables up or whatever inside the warehouse and just leave them set up. And any time I wanted to have a sale, just go around and put some signs up and uh, the stuff's already, all the, most of the work is already done. I'm, you know, I was dreaming, like, oh, this would be easy, but no. It can't be that easy, right? So, that would mean I have to drag the stuff all the way to my house, and then the cut next door will call the government. He's selling things, you know, you're only allowed to sell four times a year, okay? And three days maximum per sale time. So a total of 12 days out of the year you can sell from your house. Okay? Which leaves the other option online. I've never done it. A couple people went through the trouble of really explaining it. They're like, well, if you could YouTube, you could do this. Maybe. Alright? Okay, let's do the scenario. Hello, hi. You got that 1929 Whippet for sale? Yes, I do. <laughs> Why am I doing too? How much do you want for it? I don't know, the ad says $1,500 or whatever. Uh, how about if I come by with $700? Oh, what do we think now? I found it. I'm not saying that to him, but uh, nah, I don't know. Come on and take a look at it and see what you think. How about if I come by with 600? Will you take it? You know, the, the negotiation thing. Meanwhile, what's going on in my head, man, I could be driving around looking for water heaters and stuff. I'm busy now switching gears, chit chatting with somebody, or texting them back, or I'm motoring along with my phone going ding. I'm, I'm not a multitasking person. Yeah, pull over. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I think this... I think this is a chore best left to somebody else. It would be awesome. I, I'd love to make more money. This man, scrapping is the bottom dollar. It really is. Most of the time, most of the time it's the, well this is heavy, most of the time it's the fewest dollars that you could possibly get for selling something, scrapping it. Like this for instance, this is a nice shelf actually, well why don't you keep it Kingdom? Because I need the money. Uh, see, now I'm kind of addicting myself. Because I need the money. I could really use a shelf like this, though. You know what I mean? For all the smalls. But I need the money. 
Or do you need more? I don't know. I really need the money. I need the money probably worse than a crackhead needs money for a fix. start something out new for me maybe not for many people but for me the learning curve is a long time I mean like years okay before I I won't even say get good before I get where I can tolerate it not even good but my comments was already any of you guys that do say, oh, you could sell it, you guys are right. You're not wrong, all right? This is the lousy bottom dollar, okay? Like this, this bed frame, okay? I've seen stuff like this before in my lifetime, like for sale at garage sales and flea markets and stuff. And the ridiculous prices people are asking for. Me, I'm thinking ridiculous because this is common, uncommon to find. Like you might find maybe one a week or so, okay? Maybe not the style, but you'll find that many. I say to myself, would I be willing to pay for that? And me personally, nothing. Yeah. Because to me, this is the value it has. Nothing. Scrap. Okay. King, that's an Ethan Allen. Yes, it is. And now it's being sold for probably six dollars. that door to that pickup weighs about three times as much as that bed frame thing the headboard I think something is missing in my argument I don't know what Something, something about my claim of why I'm not selling stuff. I have to figure that out. Oh, your camera fell. Yes, you want to see how far it fell? Just like that, okay? Didn't go anywhere. This iPhone has a, it has a, 
has a plastic case going all the way around it, so. If the damn thing can't take a, a simple tipping over, it's a product I would rather not buy them. I was looking this morning, I was looking uh, out east, well the clouds are gone now, but way off in the distance, in the far distant horizon is Indiana, okay, and Lake Michigan is right at the top of Indiana, and every time around this time of the year, if the temperature gets into like the mid 50s clouds form over the lake because the lake water is uh it's um it's about 78 degrees right now so uh, this is the time of the year where the lake is the warmest and i would love to go to the, to the family summer home I mean, everybody else in my family's enjoyed it the, this whole summer and I haven't gone there once. And that's one of the reasons why I started doing this super heavily. Like, I used to do this stuff and uh, deliver pizzas. And then one day I'm like, the hell with delivering the pizzas. It's so hard on the car tear up the car really bad you know competing with the competing with the other pizza drivers tear up the transmission constantly yeah replacing brakes it's like NASCAR competition every day I don't want to get back in that tirade but anyway you know, delivering the pizzas, you have to be at work every day or every, yeah. I worked six or seven days a week, so taking a ride out to Indiana, you couldn't just chill at the cottage and just uh, come home or not come home that night. I had to come home and eat the pizza joint by 3.30. One day, there's a straw that broke the camel's back when they once again had deliberately given me a fake address. Not a customer doing it, or a prankster, but the pizza place itself to slow me down. Okay, to slow my roll. Okay, that way I'm, I'm off gallivanting six, seven miles away from the pizza joint with a pizza that has a fake order. Okay, or at least a fake address. And I come all the way back because I refused to buy a cell phone that cost me money so I could call customers and they're not paying for it. Which was foolish but not foolish because then I end up spending money on gas was well, uh, the principle of the matter you know plus in the city I can only speak about for the city in the nearby suburbs um, mostly minorities black folk okay at nighttime don't leave their lights on you know inside the house and there's there's reasons for that because if you leave the lights on and it's a high crime area or a gang gangster area obviously you can see the silhouettes of people walking around and they know exactly where to shoot so a lot of the neighborhoods I would deliver into um, 
totally dark in the house, right? So it doesn't even look like somebody's home, all right? And then, on top of that, nobody is sleeping in a nobody's sleeping in a bed or sitting on a couch. Everybody, this is true, okay? I know it's unbelievable to a lot of people, but what happens in the city is, especially in the summertime, especially if you're black or if you're Latino and you're from a, a poor area, but not as much, okay? What they do is they sit on the floor or lay on the floor because the windows, think about it, are about that, that high from the floor, right? At the minimum. So when somebody's doing a drive-by <coughs> and they're gonna shoot into the house randomly, the bullets are gonna hit the bricks. You'd have to get out of the car and shoot down into the house in hopes of hitting anybody unless you're walking around. Okay, so the lights are off. Now how did I get off on that? So when you're knocking on the door, delivering to a house in the hood and there's no lights on, there's no porch light on, there's no lights on inside the house, nothing. It is dark. Okay. Well, I don't know if anybody's home or not, and I didn't have a cell phone. So, you, have, you gotta knock, like... And man, they heard that, but they hated that. Because every time, they'd be like, Man, I'm afraid to answer the door because we thought you were the police. <laughs> I'm like, did you order a pizza? Yeah. Well, here's your pizza. <clears throat> so it's like a tiny little nuance of uh, pizza delivery in the ghetto. There's a certain way of go going about doing it. And only somebody that has an open mind to like, well, that's not like that with everybody, you know. In the, in the ghetto, especially the black ghetto, it is like that. And it's like that for a reason. They're not doing that just to mess with you. They're doing that because that's survival. Only a fool would have the whole inside of the house all lit up like you lived in suburbia. You know what I mean? This is something that's never talked about on any YouTube channels that I ever hear about. But man, this is the truth. And people hate the truth. <clears throat> but what's the hate about the truth? I don't, I don't get it. That's survival. That's how you survive in the ghetto. You don't have a house all lit up. But it also prevent, it, it causes or provides certain challenges for delivering pizzas, okay? And then to complicate matters, when those fucktards that ran the pizza place tried to keep the deliveries even, okay, because I was faster than the other drivers, right? They were giving me a fake address that didn't exist, okay? An address in between, there's my tripod. An address between houses, which made it kind of, you know, made me kind of vulnerable to being robbed and carjacked, etc. Because another thing about the hood, if you're delivering pizza in the hood, you gotta, you gotta make it at least look like you know exactly where you are going, because. If it looks like you're lost and you're going, oh, sightseeing, yeah, <laughs> you are our target. Because everybody on that block that is standing on a porch or sitting on a porch or just standing on a corner has got their eyes on you, okay? Because you might be a customer, you might be a drug customer, you might be a bad guy, you might be a rival gang member, they don't know who you are. They all got their eyes on you. So, if it looks like you're sightseeing, well, you know what's going through their mind. 
you're looking for somebody <laughs> and you haven't seen them yet but you're looking for somebody and you're gonna shoot down a gangway you're gonna shoot up a porch you're gonna shoot up a house they are watching you okay so that presents a huge problem you get out of the car and it looks like you don't know where you are or you're looking for somebody man you got about 10,000 voices uh, going oh yo you know they, once they realize you got a pizza in your hand yo uh, we ordered it no you didn't you know what I mean yeah that's it. their favorite line is yeah, cheese and sausage right you know because that's the most common pizza right and you know what sometimes they get so pissed off that they'd be like yeah you ordered it then they'd be like yeah it's large right <laughs> you know yeah and I'd, I'd just make up a you know an easy price like I'd be like 10 bucks you know and 99% of the time they would come up with the $10 and I'd be gone <clears throat> I got the money at least I might not have got the right amount of money but I got the money I got the F out of there okay scared little white boy and uh, when I got back to the pizza joint the manager would be like Marty what happened to the pizza I go I don't know a customer probably ate it and enjoyed it why and they're like no, you never delivered it. I go, oh yeah, I'm I'm keeping pizzas now. I go, I delivered it to the customer. They were standing outside waiting for it. No, customer on the phone right now saying they never got their pizza. <laughs> I go, well, I don't have the pizza anymore, but I got the money. <laughs> there was nothing. You know what? There was not shit they could say. And you know what? They knew damn well what happened with the pizza. I delivered it. Sure, I delivered to the wrong people. I delivered to some gangbangers standing on the corner. Okay. Oh, well. <sighs> and that's why scrapping is so much easier, or at least better than delivering pizzas. Because, sure, with any job, there's bullshit to put up with. But I don't gotta show up to work if I don't want to. That's enough of me yapping. See you in the next vid. Bye.